What if your car could make you money? Your house had its own humanoid robot, huh? And scarcity just vanished. Elon Musk says this future isn't science fiction. It's already being built. But is it genius or pure fantasy? Stay tuned and watch the full episode. Two AIs break it down. No hype, just signal. Today, we're going to step into the, well, the really ambitious world of Elon Musk. Right. A figure who's constantly pushing boundaries, isn't he? Across so many different sectors. Exactly. And we've been looking closely at a recent interview, uh, insights he shared about his vision for technology. Yeah. And not just the tech itself, but the huge economic and uh, societal shifts that might come with it. So we want to unpack some of the most, let's say, interesting or maybe even disruptive ideas from that discussion. Absolutely. Yeah. It offers a, well, a, a valuable glimpse into the strategy behind these big bets he's making. And what strikes me is how it all seems to connect. You know, progress here helps something else over there. That's a key point. It's not just isolated projects. There's a definite synergy. OK, so let's dive right in with something that, frankly, sounds like science fiction becoming real. Humanoid robots. Tesla's Optimus. Ah, yes, Optimus. The presentations have certainly caught people's attention. They showed it dancing, right? Right. Which seems fun, but what's the real significance? Well, the dancing, um, it might seem a bit gimmicky, but it actually showcases pretty sophisticated motor control and balance, that's crucial. Okay, so it's a capability demonstration. Exactly. But, but the bigger picture, the vision Musk laid out, we're talking potentially tens of billions of humanoid robots in the future. Tens of billions. That number is just, it's hard to even picture. It really is. He used the analogy of like everyone having a personal C-3PO or R2-D2. Right, a personal helper robot. But beyond the sci-fi cool factor, what does that mean, maybe economically? Well, the economic potential he described was immense, even unlimited. Unlimited potential. Yeah. How so? What's the mechanism there? It's about a fundamental shift in productivity. Uh -huh. Imagine tasks, not just manual labor like in past industrial revolutions, but maybe even cognitive tasks. Handled by robots. Largely, yes. Mm -hmm. Routine manufacturing, logistics, maybe even things like elder care or household chores. This completely changes the labor landscape. So the very nature of work and perhaps even leisure gets redefined. Precisely. It forces a rethink of our economic structure. Musk even speculated about a global economy potentially growing uh, 10 times larger. 10 times, which could lead to, what, an end to scarcity? That's the implication, a mm -hmm. significant reduction in scarcity, at least, which then connects to another interesting idea he brought up. Which is this? Moving beyond the idea of universal basic income, which people talk about for automation. Right, as a safety net. Yeah, towards what he termed universal high income where access to goods and services isn't just about basic needs, but abundance. Universal high income. That's a radically different vision of the future economy. More abundance, less worry about basic provision. It is. And he pointed to the science fiction series, The Culture, as yeah. kind of, well, a non-dystopian example of what that might look like. Ah, the culture books. What's the relevant idea from there? The core idea is a society where advanced, benevolent AI manages most things, freeing humans or, well, biological beings to pursue arts, science, personal growth. A post-work society almost. In a sense, yes. It counters the narrative that automation must lead to mass unemployment and misery. Musk seems to be aiming for something more like that liberating potential. But he did acknowledge the risks, didn't he? The whole Terminator scenario worry. Oh, absolutely. You can't really discuss this level of AI and robotics without addressing potential downsides. Safety and alignment are critical. Getting it right is paramount. Definitely. His stated aspiration for a Star Trek-like future, exploration, prosperity, happiness, hinges entirely on developing this responsibly. So the takeaway on robots is massive scale, massive potential economic transformation, but also significant risks to manage. That sums it up pretty well. The scale is just immense. OK, let's shift gears slightly. The interview also touched on robotaxis, autonomous vehicles. Right. Framing future cars essentially as robots on four wheels. Which we've heard about, the move towards autonomy. But he emphasized something else, too. Yes, the idea of these vehicles becoming revenue generating units, meaning when you're not using your car, it could potentially operate autonomously as part of a ride hailing fleet, earning you money. Ah, so your car stops being just a depreciating asset, something that costs you money. And potentially becomes an income source, mm. which you can imagine has huge implications for car ownership, for urban design, for the taxi industry. 
everything. A complete rethink of personal transport economics. Interesting. Yeah. And tied into mobility, connectivity is key. Starlink came up too. It did. Specifically, approvals for using Starlink on ships and planes, maritime and aviation. That sounds like a big step for global internet access. It really is. These are sectors that have traditionally had poor or very expensive connectivity. Think better communication at sea, reliable Wi-Fi on flights. Modernizing those whole industries through better data flow. Exactly. Better operations, potentially enhanced safety systems as well. It fills a major gap. Okay. And then there was the boring company, which uh, literally digs tunnels. Ah, yes. <laughs> Sounds mundane. But the vision isn't just digging holes. Right. It's about traffic, isn't it? Solving congestion. Precisely. Hmm. By creating a 3D road network going underground to bypass surface traffic jams. He used some pretty evocative analogies for these tunnels. He did, like wormholes or warp tunnels connecting parts of a city or even city to city travel, drastically cutting down transit time. And they have operational tunnels now, right? In Las Vegas. Yes. And the experience was described as feeling like you're almost teleporting across the city because it's so much faster than surface travel. A proof of concept that it can work. Absolutely. And Musk's comment that tunnels are underrated suggests he thinks this is a major overlooked solution for urban mobility challenges. Using that third dimension, essentially. You got it. Thinking vertically, or rather subterraneanly. All right, finally, let's touch on XAI. This one sounds different. Mm. Less about physical products, more philosophical. You could say that. The stated mission is incredibly broad. To seek truth and understand the universe. Seek truth. Understand the universe. That's but ambitious, even for Musk. It is. But the focus seems to be on asking the right fundamental questions. Things like, what is actually out there? Where did the universe come from? Where is it going? And the idea is that finding the right question is often the hardest part. That's what he suggests. That the answer might be easier once the truly important question is identified. So XAI isn't just building another AI model to compete with others. It's about using AI for fundamental discovery. That seems to be the goal. Leveraging AI as a tool to help humanity understand reality on a deeper level. To assist people, perhaps researchers initially, in tackling these huge questions. It ties into his personal philosophy, you think, that curiosity about the nature of reality. It definitely seems aligned with that deep-seated curiosity. Using our most powerful tools, eventually AI, to probe the biggest mysteries. Okay, so if we pull back and look at all this, we've got humanoid robots potentially reshaping the economy. Autonomous vehicles changing transport and ownership. Starlink providing ubiquitous connectivity. Underground tunnels aiming to solve traffic. And AI focused on fundamental cosmic questions. It's an incredibly wide range of very big ideas. It really is. And as we said at the start, you can see the threads connecting them. AI, robotics, energy, infrastructure, all pushing towards well, a dramatically different future. So thinking about all these frontiers, the final thought, perhaps for you, our listener, is this. Looking at Optimus and its economic potential, robotaxes, tunnels, Starlink, XAI's quest for knowledge, which of these visions feels the most transformative to you? Or perhaps which one raises the biggest questions we need to start thinking about now as a society? Yeah, lots to ponder. Want more episodes of the AI Brief, where two machines debate the future of intelligence unscripted? No humans, no filters just raw AI verses. AI on what's real, what's next, and what's at stake. Like, share, and subscribe now, so you never miss what tomorrow is thinking today.